Sure, no, no problem. Um, so you well, um, at the beginning I was planning to do um, this um, Scrum course, right? But the CEO replied back saying that uh, we that we did not have time to run courses in the company. That he needed changes quickly, very quickly. So I thought, uh, okay, if they're not gonna give me time to teach these people how to do Scrum, you know, and 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 try to fix this, uh, I will need to do something else, right? So what can I do? Well, let's start uh, visualizing the process what they have at the moment, you know? So, uh, we uh, got a, a whiteboard and mapped the current process, you know? And then the next step was uh, stop what they were doing, you know? So stop everybody developing software because you are introducing waste, you know? So, uh, we stop the process and we focus on the backlog to refine the backlog, to create the proper backlog, right? And then with the backlog done and the process visible, what we did was to limit the work in progress, you know? Yeah, we, we started, yeah, and we started to visualize what we were doing. In this case, I would have a question of interest to me. Uh, to which uh, maximum did you set uh, the whip uh, at the beginning? It was empirical because I uh, this was a dysfunctional team, and uh, I did not know the capacity of the team, the capacity of delivery. So uh, when this situation happens, the first thing you need to do is to set the whip empirically, right? So, uh, and we started to define policies for each of the phases of the process, mm. you know? So one, one whip for each phase. Yeah, we set up a, an input queue, an analysis, a design and development, a test, in different environments and uh, delivery, you know? We put some buffers in there uh, at the beginning and uh, we make policies explicit, right? So we, we decided to uh, define policies for each change of state. Say for example, what policies should I meet for analysis to consider this item not or no longer an analysis item, something ready to be developed. For example, this is a Kanban board for the HR process I have in the company, right? In the first column, you see applicants, you know? In the second column, you see contacted, right? What policy is making me to move a candidate from contacted to the next step, which is language assessment. Well, I will need to agree the interview for a language assessment to consider that candidate available for the language assessment. You know, so uh, in in that way, going back to my development process uh, with the policies. We uh, we were in the pos in a position to start start moving items in the process uh, with an asset uh, with um, as an acceptable level of quality and the fact that the, that you limit the working pro process uh, in progress. Uh, generated uh, conversations that wouldn't happen if you wouldn't do that, you know? So basically it was a cultural change that started to happen. From fear to dialogue. Yeah, from fear to dialogue, you know? 
and that uh, created a situation where people started to be more honest in terms of what they can actually deliver and uh, honesty generated a communication with the customer that the team was finally uh, able to tell what they were able to deliver according to their, their capacity and uh, the business was getting what the team was able to deliver you know and uh, a continuous improvement cycle started to evolve from that you know so that was almost a year ago and now we have an hyper productive uh, team with a very sophisticated uh, development process you know uh, the CEO uh, has an idea and he can put a priority on that and he knows that the team will be able to deliver it at a rate of two and a half stories per week so it's completely predictable it's like a software factory you know when a problem happens, everything halts and they do root cause analysis and make sure the problem doesn't happen again and the uh, development is start restarting again. You know? it's, it's interesting how Kama was able to uh, catalyze cultural change you know, and, and this is exactly what David Anderson is explaining in his book, you know, is a, how you're evolving, not from something completely new, okay, here is a scrum, okay, I'm not a product manager, I'm a scrum master, you're not called an analyst, uh, you're not called developer, you're not called tester, you're called a just developer, no, no, keep everything as, as it is. Let's discover all these sophisticated artifacts, ceremonies, and everything naturally as you evolve. No, and that's that's basically what happened, you know? And it's documented in my case study that I'm presenting in, in Spain. So it's and uh, I think it's fascinating. Of For example I'm using Scrum at the moment. And I feel like I don't know. If I should I go to Canva or should I try Scrum? I mean, I'm trying with the Scrum now at the moment because it's it's the customer expects iterations. But uh, this one experiments. I have a dysfunctional team. It's not very good that team in terms of uh, Java skills, for example. Would Scrum be the right process to use or perhaps Canva? I don't know. I'm going to experiment for a couple of sprints and perhaps I will need to Kanbanize the whole thing. I don't know. No, I, I, there are things from Scrum that I perceive as, as waste at the moment when the Scrum is a lean process. But I don't know. I need to experiment. That's why in my case study, I'm, I, my conclusion says that uh, the, the, the current development process is so sophisticated that it's very similar to Scrum because Scrum is a sophisticated process. But uh, I started from nothing on what they have at the moment. So it's, it's interesting. I'm, I'm doing a lot of experiments w with that, you know, yeah. and with people, with uh, process improvement, continuous improvement. So it's, it's very exciting, really. It's, it's really uh, sensing and responding to what works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in, exciting, in real time, you know? no dogma, no no predefined uh, yeah. concept, yeah. No, no predefined yeah. approach. It's truly a human approach. Exactly, it's human, it's completely human. Humans are driving this. So let's evolve things, 
So, and this is how we do uh, uh, project management in Argentina and Peru right now, yes? Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, well, this is how through your I services, do things, you know, yes. not uh, many people work. Not, not many people, ways. but taller. Taller, to yeah, taller, and, and agile, and, and also agile works, works in, in that way, you know. And uh, this is your your mission to 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 be there to answer the needs of the people who understand finally that they get nowhere if they continue like that, right? Yeah, it's I mean it's a road uh, without any end, you know. I mean I I listen to horror stories in the Peruvian industry about uh, you know uh, people working mad hours. Uh, weekends and trying to meet schedules uh, created by someone that made a prediction of uh, projects, you know, that, uh, okay, in eight months I'm going to deliver this to th this level of detail. I mean, it's crazy, it's crazy. This is happening, you know, I mean, it's, and a lot of people is very disappointed about the industry, you know. You ask a software developer, what do you want to be? I want to be a project manager, they will say. Because project managers are not, you know, into all this madness. They're creating the madness. Mm -hmm. But they're not executing that madness, you know. They are it's more to execute that madness than creating it in the first place. Yeah. The, uh, but uh, working in this way, uh, People is starting to appreciate uh, the software engineering uh, uh, career. You know, the, the, it's, it's, it's it's not about uh, working mad hours or trying to do things that are beyond your not to be a, to be a slave anymore, but uh, no, to, yeah, to, it's, to be it's valuable. Too abuse the profession is too abuse. Not he only here, but. Worldwide, of course. Of yeah, course. I work in Ireland, in the UK, in in Spain. I lived there for several years, you know, and uh, a lot of companies yeah. are it's uh, are doing this madness. You know? we, we we could say that we could advance that uh, it's uh, the command and control mentality, yeah. which yeah. is uh, which is spread over the, the sense and respond uh, uh, reactivity. Yeah. Which yeah. really truly kills people, kills, kills their people, value. Yeah, kills kills people. I mean, you have uh, zombies uh, in front of a PC eight hours, more than eight hours a day. I exactly. mean, they they don't have life or yes, they don't count as a physical casualty. Yeah, but they <laughs> their, their lives are, are burned. Yeah, yeah, exactly. By that. So exactly. so the, what's the difference? What's the difference? Exactly, exactly. No? So is we're it, it, just trying to change the profession here, you know. It's quasi a uh, societal uh, advancing the society, the society mm. through mm. through through this. It's uh, it's not neutral your your action there. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's true. And that's it, Paul. Thank you I very mean, much, man. That's Masai. my your introduction. Agree, my introduction to your yeah, future talk. Of, yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, Manuel. Thank you for welcoming. Thanks. Thanks to you.